I'm Irene Doughtney. I'm one of the Greens councillors on the City of Sydney. I put in a notice of motion um, asking for council to contact the Ombudsman and protest about the violence against Occupy Sydney protesters here in Martin Place. I also asked um, in that notice of motion for um, us to negotiate a camping place for the, the group and um, put on a, um, a forum. The only thing that was agreed to was the forum. I've since asked a question about that and that will be happening in April. So it's a long time down the road. So because council wouldn't help, I wrote to the Ombudsman myself. I wrote to the head of the local area command, Scipioni and the Minister for Police. Um, yeah, I got um, a response back from the Ombudsman who virtually said it's up to the police to answer for what they've done. Um, police contacted me and they believe that they have done a wonderful job that they have not been violent and that they admitted while they were talking to me that they believe in using tactics of intimidation. And that um, when I said that, you know, they're coming here with police horses and the dogs and everything it was intimidating, they said that was the, that was the general idea. So um, as far as council goes, council is part of the establishment. And I suppose I'm a bit of a rough diamond on council. I don't believe I am part of the establishment. I live in public housing um, and I feel I'm very different to most of the other councillors. But council, by its very nature, is part of the establishment. So therefore it must represent the 1% in some way or another. So I will keep working to support the Occupy Sydney movement. Um, I don't know what more I can do now. Um, but I continue to watch and I continue to talk to everybody so that if there's any more police violence, I can act on it to help. Here we are in 2011 and the traditional people of the land are still barely recognised or compensated for their disenfranchisement by white invasion in 1788. When it comes to human rights, I must acknowledge that for Aboriginal Australians there is still a long way to go. The Northern Territory intervention and the suspension of the Racial Discrimination Act have violated their most basic rights, such as housing, a job with a decent pay, self-determination and human dignity. Poverty, disenfranchisement and despair are the fate of many Aboriginal men and women who have one of the lowest life expectancy rates in the world. With a hugely disproportionate incarceration rate and the chance of death in custody. Where are the human rights of refugees who come to Australia hoping to escape from intolerable regimes? Only to find themselves locked up in detention centres. More deaths in custody, more despair. This in a country riding on the back of the mining boom, a country that is the envy of the decaying economies of the Western world. In this lucky country, 50,000 young people are homeless, while rents are totally unaffordable for students, those on low incomes and the poor. Australia's violations of human rights are manifest but they pale into insignificance when compared to the human rights abuses in other countries like Syria, Iran, Afghanistan, Somalia, to name the most obvious. But in 2011, there has also been a great uplifting of voices across the world, demanding an end to human rights abuses. The Arab Spring and the courage of demonstrators across the Middle East has lit a flame in the hearts and minds of those who cry out for social justice and an end to human rights abuses. The Occupy Wall Street movement has given voice to the unrest and disenchantment that many people feel about the injustices of the neo-capitalist system. In Moscow, young people rally against the corruption of Putin's Russia while Europe is aflame with protests against the austerity measures. 
For the first time in recent history, the tension between the elites and the masses is polarising and change is possible. The haves and haves nots are finally in direct opposition and inequality and human rights abuses that follow from that division are painfully evident. The move to the right is being felt across the world. The rise of the Tea Party in the U US, far-right nationalism in Europe, and anti-refugee sentiment everywhere, and Islamophobia are all symptoms of growing conservatism and fear of the other. In Sarkozy's France, they made prostitution illegal last week with cl clients facing possible imprisonment for merely visiting a girl. Human rights are very discretionary in a country like France that has banned the burqa and persecutes the travellers. Yet still we are heartened by the outstanding bravery of all ordinary people in Cairo who stood up against entrenched dictatorship and the armed forces day after day. Demonstrators who returned again and again, demanding democracy and an end un to tyranny until, in the end, they won. The Occupy Wall Street movement has shown the same persistence as protesters against corporate greed and inequality have faced the most extreme repression since the Vietnam War. The attempted repression of the Occupy movement across the world has shown how easily the forces of the state will turn on its own citizens when capital is criticised. But in the face of this repression, the voices of the protesters have not been silenced. Underlying all these protests, revolutions and resistance has been the role of the social media, the voices of Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, YouTube and the internet in general. Long before there was any mention of Occupy Wall Street in the mainstream media, the cybersphere was full of the protests on Wall Street. The call to the streets in Tunisia and Egypt was as much as via social media as it was via the mosques. To quote the United Nations High Commissioner Navi Pillay, in 2011, human rights went viral. The role of WikiLeaks in exposing the abuse of human rights in Iraq cannot be underestimated in this explosion as it exposed the lack of morality in government and in war. And it also showed how David could humiliate and challenge the Goliath of the state. Now the UN is hoping to use this social media to promote the Universal Declaration of Human Rights a document that has already been translated into 382 different languages and lays out 30 basic human rights, which are summarised as the freedom from fear and the freedom from want, encompass, encompassing all the civil, political, social, economic and cultural rights it contains. To this I would add environmental rights, the right of humans to have a planet that is livable and sustainable and protects the incredible bounty of nature and the incredible animals who share this planet with us. Finally, I would like to mention that State Greens MLC David Shoebridge will be bringing a New South Wales Human Rights Bill to Parliament in 2012. And if anybody would like to have some input into that, just speak to me or contact David over at Parliament House. Marx famously said, there is a spectre haunting Europe. I would amend this to say, there is a spectre haunting the world. The spectre of human rights and social justice and its time is now. Thank you.